Hi there, this is Ariel Poirillis from Dundas, and today I'm happy to walk you through the Gartner Modern BI Bake Off exercise and show you a little bit of what Dundas BI can do. So first, just a quick intro about Dundas. We've been around in the data visualization and BI space for over 20 years now. Many of you know us from way back using our charts and visualization components that we sold to Microsoft back in 2007. We since then evolved quite a lot, but our motto was always the same. We want to make 80% of use cases easy and all the rest possible so BI and data, and data can get to more users in the way they need it. Our modern BI platform, Dundas BI, is designed to adapt to different user needs and skill set. It provides organization with a tailored experience to ensure more users are using the data. Dundas BI is entirely web-based, built on HTML5, and it provides all BI needs under one roof, delivering data via an extremely powerful set of interactive visualization. The flexibility of the platform is what really allows you to build custom and manage solutions that works the way you want it. Dundas BI really differs on the flexibility, the data visualization innovation, and the enterprise readiness that allow our customers to use the solution and control the full environment with the right security and the governance needed to scale it up and access more users internally or externally. Beyond the technology, our customers choose us because we are a trusted partner. We provide excellent support both for our support team as well as our professional services team that helps you and advise you on how to use the tool and data visualization best practices in general. Dundas BI flexibility allows us to serve customers in many different industries. It also allows us to be best in class in a bad BI. If you have a SaaS multi-tenant solution or if you are a government organization that wants to open data to the public, you can easily integrate Dynas BI into a solution and provide visualization and analytics to your users. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is to start the bake-off exercise. So I'm going to log on to Dynas BI and I'm going to land immediately on the dashboard we prepared for that exercise. So this dashboard is designed to answer the question, which states have the best schools for academics, values, and earning potential? This is actually based on real college's data. I'm going to go into full screen mode, and I'm going to start with the map on the top left-hand side. I actually have two maps here, one that shows the average SAT across the different states. The darker the color is, the higher the average SAT is. And on the right-hand side, I have a map showing the median earnings after 10 years. And again, the darker the color is, the better the earning is. Now, this map gives me a great uh, understanding of both the academic's value and the earnings value, but what I'd like to do is actually use a combined view. So this is an interaction with views on this dashboard to show me a symbol actually represents the earnings after 10 years, and this, the bigger the symbol is, the bigger the earning is, on top of a different state. So now I can quickly understand which state has both good SAT average as well as uh, high earnings. And I can also understand maybe which states give me the option to understand uh, to maybe have a lower SAT average and still get into schools that will give me good earnings. For example, in Nevada, if I would do that, I can still get into a, um, uh, the schools without a very high score, but earn quite a lot. And I can, of course, play with that and, and uh, filter down further. So maybe I can uh, uh, say that I want to earn at least uh, 46,000. And then once I do that, I can see there's only two cities in Nevada where I can earn more than uh, 46,000. And that's uh, uh, Reno and uh, Incline Village. And maybe if I go in and expand Reno, I can see what uh, schools actually are available in, under Reno. In this case, the only University of uh, Nevada in Reno. Um, so that's a great, a great uh, way to drill down from the state level to the city um, to the actual school. Another way that I can uh, actually uh, um, interact with my dashboard is just click on the uh, different uh, states. In this case, if I click on uh, Nevada, you can see the bubble chart as well as the uh, bottom right the uh, cross tab comparing the schools focusing on the schools in that state. Maybe I can click on the uh, California and now have a different bubble showing me all the different uh, schools in California. Now I can quickly understand which one of my schools I'm going to have top earnings as well as high average SAT score. And the color will actually represent if my tuition is going to be high. The bigger the bubble is, the bigger the school is. On the bottom left-hand side of this dashboard, I have the top SAT schools in different years. So right now I'm focused on 2009. And next to it, I have the trend showing me if it's getting harder or easier to get into the schools in terms of SAT score I actually need to score. On the right-hand side, I have my cross tab helping me to compare different schools. Right now it's filtered on California because I selected that the, uh, location. I can also set to a default the, uh, selection of schools or maybe apply my own uh, uh, selection. So maybe I want to focus on the uh, March Madness the finalist of last year. So I'm going to choose uh, Wisconsin as well as uh, Duke. And then from here, I can uh, go in and choose the, uh, uh, the right selection. And once I apply that, I can now easily uh, compare both the last year finalists, Duke and Wisconsin. I can also maybe uh, decide to uh, sort it differently and maybe compare it by the, uh, um, the debt that I'm going to have for those schools. Um, I can also transpose information and maybe see the schools on the columns. 
So what I'd like to do next is move on to the uh, data preparation. So I'm going to exit my full screen, and I'm going to create a new dashboard. Now I can do my data preparation in different layers, but I can immediately start a dashboard and just drag and drop Excel files onto my folders here. So that's what I did, and I can see here I already have data connectors for the Crosswalk file and the Merge 2009 files. From here, I can just go in and drag and drop the information and start analyzing my data. So for example, here I'll come in, drag and drop my SAT average, and then I can drag and drop or choose from the rows at different dimensions. I'm going to use the uh, hierarchy I've created here for the states. And I'll go into the uh, uh, filter menu, add a member filter, position it here, and now I can go to the view mode. And the view mode, I can choose how to visualize this information. So for example, I can revisualize this to use a bar chart. I can interact with the built-in interactions of the dashboard, so I'm just going to right-click, sort, and choose maybe to sort it by descending order. And I'm going to start interacting with data by drilling down on it from one level to the next, and so on. So I can now see from the uh, state, city, all the way down to the uh, school level. Next, I'd like to show how I can join different files together. So here I have the crosswalk file. I can expand that, drag and drop a certain field from that file onto my dashboard canvas. So here I'm going to drag and drop the uh, IPD mesh, which is basically the exact same field as the unit ID that I have in the uh, merge data file. Now this unit ID is, a, is the same unit ID I've used in the uh, original file, the uh, merge 2009 file, and I've used that also to create a hierarchy, in this case the state, city, uh, university hierarchy. So what I can do is I can drag and drop that hierarchy onto the IPD match, and this will automatically join the two files together, allowing me to see now the information from the crosswalk file organized by that specific hierarchy. So here you can see the information already aggregated to the top level of my data. In the case where you need to further clean and transform your data, you can just use the data cube layer and prepare a more specific data cube that is aligned with what uh, you want to achieve. So for example, here I drag and drop the Excel sheet. This created a selection of the data. And from here, I can choose that connector and insert common transformations or advanced transformation. So for example, in this case, I'm going to insert a data conversion transformation. And I'm going to go in here and choose what type of data uh, I want to use for the different fields. For example, here maybe I want to use instead of a double, I want to use a string for the uh, control type uh, field, for example. That way I can insert more and more transformation. I can also insert more data into that uh, uh, data cube. So for example, here I'm going to bring up a lookup file that they, uh, will allow me to join this data with the uh, state information. So for example, here, just going to go in here drag and drop the, uh, uh, that sheet from the uh, state lookup. And I'm going to drag and drop it onto that the, uh, data conversion. And now I can configure the join. I can drag and drop the right field from the uh, lookup file into the uh, original file. So I'm going to use here the uh, abbreviation, drag and drop it onto the uh, uh, state abbreviation from the original file. This will give me the full name of that state. So what I'd like to show you next is how I design those dashboards, and then I can share my stories. So I'm going to go into a new dashboard creation. And what I'll do here is I'll start creating the visualization you saw on the original dashboards. I'm going to go into my data cubes and drag and drop the fields I need for these dashboards. I'm going to create the map first. I'm going to use the SAT average, place it here, add my uh, hierarchy with my state at the top level, and then I'm going to use the revisualize option. So I'm going to revisualize this into a map, and then SPI will automatically try and find the right map for my data. Now what you can also do, you can actually tell the SPI to use a specific map for your visual. So in this case, I'm going to use, instead of the uh, map that you detect, I'm going to use a map where Alaska is shifted to the bottom. So for that, I'm going to use a property here. It's going to tell me, allow me to use that requested map only. And now you can see Alaska shifted to the bottom. I'm going to zoom in into that visual a little bit, reposition it. And now I'm going to add a legend control. So I'm going to go into my data visualization, choose the legend, and this will automatically bind that legend to that chart, that map in this case. Second visual I want to add is a visual that shows me the information about the, uh, uh, the cross tab information where I could compare the schools. So again, I'm going to use the SAT average, place it here, and start adding more fields. So for example, I want to use the earning fields. I'm just going to search for that field, earnings, and then I'm going to use the uh, uh, same hierarchy. But what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to define the level of the hierarchy to be the school level. Apply this, and now I can even revisualize specific columns in that, in that ta table directly from here. So I'm going to use that to revisualize the earning column to be a data bar column. What I want to do next is define the interaction between the map and that cross tab. So the way I do that is simply by right clicking the map, using the setup interaction menu, and choosing the right type of interaction. So in this case, a filter interaction, and that's all I need to do. Then SPI is smart enough to detect the right interaction and filter the right values onto that cross tab. So if I go and view this now and click on California, you can see 
this table, this cross tab, automatically filtered by California. I can click on Texas, I can click on Nevada again, and you can see that information filtered accordingly. So what I can do now is I can come in here and add notes to my visualization. So right, I'm going to right click here, this uh, table, I'm going to add a note, I'm going to say, this is the best state for low SATs, but high earnings. So now I have my finding here, I'm going to apply this. Other users will be able to see that note, come in here, reply if they want to. But I can also tur turn this into a full story. So the way I do that is I'm just going to create a new slideshow. And that slideshow will basically allow me to use that new dashboard I just created. So this is dashboard 2, I believe. And I'm going to even use the original dashboard I had, which is the uh, top schools dashboard. And now I can use that in a meeting and actually present that story to other, uh, uh, audience, to other users in my uh, uh, group simply by using that slideshow. I can, of course, go back and forth between my different slides or even exit my slideshow and go to the actual view. So if I go to my view now, I can even move on to the next step and share this information with other users, either from here by sending a link to this dashboard or uh, opening it in the, sorry, exporting it into PDF, Excel, PowerPoint, or an image. But I can also do it in a scheduled way. So I can do it uh, using a, uh, uh, a predefined schedule on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I can, can even go down to the minute or uh, hour level. I can uh, set up the uh, uh, delivery option in terms of who will be receiving that email. And I can also uh, uh, define the export content, so how this dashboard attachment will be delivered to uh, uh, the users within the email. So this can be done on schedule or to be, uh, to be done via data-driven notification, which is a bit more proactive, so allowing you to define uh, a condition where you can specify if the value increases or decreases, only then I want to send the, uh, the email to the users. Of course, I can define states with thresholds and based on those, share that information with other users. When it comes to governance, Dance BI offers many different tools to achieve that specific scenario where you have analysts or business users creating their own models and then promoting it to the rest of the users. So what you'll notice is that Dance BI has a special project called My Project. It also has another special project called the Global Project. Typically, most of the work of the analysts will be done under My Project. So for example, here I have defined my data cubes under My Project. What I can do now to promote it to the rest of the users is just choose the Publish option. And this option will allow me to now choose to move this uh, or copy this uh, model into other folders that can be shared and accessed by other users. Other ways for me to share and access the, the information is just by going to the properties and under the security option, just choose and add multiple users or security groups that I have in my system. Now when it comes to securing the data, what you'll notice is that Dance BI gives you the option to define custom attributes to control role level data security. So here, if I go into the administration section, I can go into the accounts, and then you can see there's I have a couple of accounts I've defined for this uh, project, the uh, California user and the New Jersey users. And if you go into those specific accounts, what you'll notice is that they have a custom attribute associated with them. So I've defined a custom attribute called state attribute. And for California, I've defined the state of California as the uh, default value for that the, uh, specific user. So if I log out of my system now, and log in again as that specific account. What you see is that the user that they logged in with that specific custom attribute can only see data for, the, for that attribute, in this case, California. If I have over that the, uh, state, I can see the pie chart showing me the information with the different uh, cities within that state. However, if I were to have over a different location in this uh, map, you can see that my access is denied. I cannot see out of state's information. The last thing I'd like to show you is how Dennis BI allows you to easily add context to your visualization and to your dashboard directly from the uh, visualization at runtime. So we do that using what we call data tools. So here I'm going to use this cross tab and I want to flag my earnings and see which one of the universities will give me earnings which are not sufficient to my, uh, to my desires. So what I can do here is I can right click my column, go into my data tools, and you can see three different data tools I can choose from. I can define a period of a period. In this case, what I want to do is I can set up, is I want to set up state. So I'm going to use the set up state option and I'm going to add a new state. And that state will be a bad one in case that my value goes less than a certain target or threshold. So in this case, I'm going to define a threshold. And let's say I don't want to earn less than 70,000. So once I define that threshold, I can just click on the visual button here, and this will now automatically apply that state to this uh, cross-step. So I can see that for Yale, that's not a university I want to go to. 
Another data tool I can use is a data tool that allows me to do some uh, analytics on my data. So for example, here I'm going to add a formula. And on this formula bar at the top here, I can just type in any formula expression I want to use. So I'm going to use the trend and forecast formula here. I'm just going to input my time dimension. And I'm going to plot it against my uh, SAT average. So now I can choose how to output that the uh, prediction. So I'm going to use the uh, line chart here, apply this. And this will now add a uh, trend line showing me not only the trend of the different the, uh, uh, schools, but also the forecast going into the future. So I can see that most of the schools are going up in terms of the uh, SAT average that I need to score in order to get in that school. But there is one school here where that school, specifically the uh, Olin College, where the SAT, SAT average is going down. Maybe that's an indicator of how a, uh, the academics level in that school is maybe declining over different years. So I hope you enjoyed watching this Bake Off exercise with Dance BI. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info at dance.com or just visit our website at dance.com where you can play with other samples or even download the evaluation version or try it online and see, see for yourself how Dance BI can play by your role. Thank you and goodbye.